This week's constellations are Canis Minor, Cancer, and Leo. Leo is a bright constellation with many good telescope objects within it. Cancer is a dim constellation, but one that has a good binocular and telescope object. And Canis Minor has one nice bright star, and that's about it. This is a shot of the part of the sky that contains all three of these constellations. To give you a little perspective, here are some stars belonging to a neighboring constellation. You may recognize those as Gemini. On the left, or the east side of this image, are the stars belonging to Leo. This asterism is supposed to represent a lion lying on the ground. At the far left end of this constellation is Denebola. That's a word that means the tail of the lion. Over at the bottom of the sickle-shaped part of the asterism, or the backwards question mark, is Regulus. The name is Latin for prince or little king. Regulus has a magnitude of 1.35 and is 77 light years away, so it's a bright star. It's also one that spins very rapidly. It completes a rotation in only about 16 hours. It takes the Sun about 25 days to do that, and the Sun is a much smaller star than Regulus. A point on the equator of Regulus is moving about 160 times as fast as a point on the Sun's equator. Regulus is moving almost fast enough to fly apart just because of that rotation. Lying between Leo and Gemini is Cancer, one of the faintest constellations. This is a tough one to spot, but just remember that its upside down Y is halfway between the backwards question mark of Leo and the left twin of Gemini. When I put a little descriptor on Cancer here, it's very faint. Then, lying a little south of and between Cancer and Gemini is the constellation of Canis Minor, the lesser dog, and it's also got a lesser asterism. There isn't much to it at all. In fact, most of the time, about all you can spot is the bright star at the left end of it, which is Procyon. And the name Procyon means before the dog. Uh, the dog, in this case, is Sirius. Procyon rises a little bit before Sirius for Northern Hemisphere observers. Uh, Procyon is the eighth brightest star in the sky, primarily because it's only about 11 and a half light years away. We'll fade out all the labels now. Can you still spot the asterisms? And bring them back. along with their names. Now we'll take a look at a part of the sky that's a little bit to the west of the last view. Remember when we're looking at the sky aimed south like we are here, west will be to the right. And you probably recognize, maybe, Gemini up there at the top of the picture here. Below it and to the right is Orion. And you may not have quite learned this yet, but Canis Minor will be there. And then finally, at the bottom of this picture is part of Canis Major. We'll fade these out and make use of something here. You may remember the asterism for Orion's belt and how you can use it as a pointer to get to Sirius. Not a straight line, but almost straight. There's Sirius, that's the dog star, the bright star in Ursa Major, the one that Procyon is the follower of. Now, Sirius, along with Betelgeuse and Orion, 
and Procyon in Canis Minor form a little asterism of three stars that we call the Winter Triangle. It's just about an equilateral triangle and it happens to be prominent during the winter. Now let's head back to the other part of the sky we had a little earlier and showing a little bit of more northern stars here. Up at the top you may recognize something up there, Ursa Major, and we've got the Big Dipper outlined. We can use the stars in the Big Dipper to find Leo. You may remember that the rightmost stars in the cup of the Dipper point to Polaris. The left two stars in the cup point to Regulus. Straight at it, in fact. So that's an easy way to find Regulus if you can see both Ursa Major and Leo at the same time. Well, if you've found Regulus, you've found Leo as well, because Regulus is right in the midst of it. So there's the asterism for Leo. Over there on the left end of Leo, the bright star is Denebola. So Regulus at the bottom of that backwards question mark, Denebola at the tail of the lion. Now we can check out the other constellations in this week's group. There's Cancer, and there's Canis Minor. And in Canis Minor, the one bright star again is Procyon. Gemini is still visible in this picture, most of it anyway. So you can see that up there. Now let's check out this part of the sky with our three constellations again. Slightly different view. Here are each of the three constellations. And we'll take a look at some things that may not be so apparent to the naked eye. The first one will be in Cancer, just to the right of the asterism. Right here is something that you can actually see with the naked eye, although it just looks like a smudge or a little bit of out of focus something or other. But this is Messier Object 44 nowadays known as the Beehive Cluster, although that's a modern name for it. You couldn't see a, any semblance of a beehive without binoculars or a telescope. Here's an actual picture of it. Through a telescope it does look like a swarm of bees. It's a good object to see in binoculars or a telescope under low power. If you get the magnification up too much you start losing too many of the stars in the cluster because they're outside the field of view. This is about 600 light years away, and there are at least 1,000 stars in this cluster, although most can't be seen in small telescopes. Let's check out something in Leo. This is pretty well focused in on Leo. There are a lot of galaxies that you can see within the constellation of Leo, but we're just going to look at three of them here that are right underneath the tail portion of Leo. And in this circle, there are three galaxies that you can see in one low-power telescope field of view. So you get your telescope aimed just right, and you can see all three of these. And this is called the Leo triplet. And here's a picture of them. These galaxies are all about 35 million light years away although M66 down there in the lower right hand corner is actually about a million light years farther away, so 36 million light years away for it. All three of these are spiral galaxies, although we're looking at the NGC object edge on, so we can't see the spiral nature of it very well. These range in magnitude from 9.4 to 10.3, so they'll be Probably a bit difficult to see through our 750 binoculars, but if we use the great big binoculars we have, we might be able to spot those. They'll be easy to see in an 8-inch telescope. And that's it for this week's Constellations.